Hey guys, this is Preston with another White Metal Games cheat code for you guys today. Today we're going to be looking at doing realistic skin tones with the airbrush. And so we're going to show you the process that we use here at the studio to do that. Um, these are just going to be kind of uh, more basic level skin tones. We'll do a video in the future that shows some more nuanced approaches, which involve um, applying different uh, colors of warm and cool colors to the skin uh, before we apply the actual skin tones. Uh, but this time we're just going to show you a nice uh, quick way to get nice looking skin tones with your airbrush. And so today we've got this uh, Age of Sigmar Ogre model here. It's looking pretty cool so far. He's just been primed black. And so we're going to start off the process like we do with most of our models here. We're going to be taking our, uh, we use golden high flow acrylic titanium white paint to do our zenithal highlight with. Uh, here in the studio, but any kind of paint, any kind of white paint will work for this. You just need to make sure you thin it down uh, properly so that it gets a nice smooth finish when you apply it with the airbrush. So I'm just going to do about uh, two to one parts thinner in paint. So that's uh, two parts paint, one part thinner. And I'm just going to check it on my glove here to make sure we have a nice smooth looking um, print. So right now it looks kind of speckly. It's not quite as smooth as I want it to be. You can kind of see if you look really close, you can see tiny little speckles. Um, and if you check our pre-shading video, cheat code, you can check out uh, the ins and outs of doing the pre-shading. It's the needle highlight step here. Uh, but basically the trick is we just want to get a nice uh, smooth, that looks much smoother. You don't see those tiny little speckles there. And so uh, if you're getting the speckles, just add a little bit more thinner so you get a nice smooth looking finish. Then uh, we'll start the zenithal highlight here. I'm just going to apply this white paint from above. We're about a foot away from the model at this point. And we're just kind of slowly building this white paint up here. You want to make sure you do this in a well ventilated area because this will produce a lot of, uh, as you guys can probably see on the camera, it'll produce a lot of like uh, mist from the paint. And uh, as long as you're using acrylic paint, you don't really have to worry about breathing it in too much, but still, um, it's always good to. Uh, take precautions, especially if you're doing a lot of airbrushing, you want to make sure that you're not breathing in a bunch of paint. So here we have our basic zenithal highlight, so applying the white paint from above has created our value structure for us here. And that's just the difference between these lighter areas and the darker areas. And so we have a nice depth, we can see where the light's kind of naturally falling on all the shapes of the model, creating that natural looking highlights and transitions for us. So that's the basic uh, zenithal highlight. So next, uh, let's do the skin properly. We're gonna do a pre-shade here, which is the similar idea of a zenithal highlight, but we're gonna be going in closer with our airbrush now, and we're gonna be targeting specific areas of the skin and uh, the rest of the model. So usually the uh, face is gonna be brighter than most areas, and we're basically just kind of brightening up some of these uh, areas, especially focused around the skin. Um, one of the tricks to doing the skin properly with the airbrush is to make sure the skin is a bit brighter um, as far as the values are than the surrounding areas. And in fact, uh, some of these areas like on this underside of the arm where it's pretty dark here, we want to make sure we actually come in from below and apply some of this lighter, lighter values there. And this will just create a more natural skin tone. If you keep your dark values too dark for this, the flesh tone, it'll start looking a little weird, so you'll make sure it's a bit brighter. Than you would normally do. So the, as a general rule of thumb, the skin is going to be brighter than going to be one of the brighter parts of the model. So with that in mind, we want to make sure that we apply our pre-shade mostly to the skin, just to brighten that up nicely. Yeah. So we go. Now we have this guy. It's all uh, pre-shaded here. So there's definitely a difference between the uh, values of the skin and the other materials in the model, especially like the pants and stuff like that. And so, uh, so now that we have our uh, pre-shade on there, start applying our flesh tones. And with this technique, we're going to be doing like a, what we call an underspray and overspray technique. And so what that means is uh, the underspray, we'll kind of be applying it with the airbrush from beneath. And then afterwards, we'll come in with the overspray where we're applying it from above. Um, and these are two different colors that we're applying. And they'll uh, transition into each other in those transitional areas on our value structure here. 
and uh, give us really nice looking, subtle, uh, but realistic looking transitions. So the colors I'm going to be using on this guy are going to be these P3 colors we have here. This is a uh, Cardic Flesh for my underspray, which is kind of a darker flesh tone. And then we have Ren Flesh for my overspray, which is very um, pale, um, much more bright skin tone. And you can really use any colors you want for this, depending on what you're painting. The main key with this is just to make sure that your underspray is, is a few value steps darker than your overspray. That's that's the key here. We want to make sure we have nice depth on the model. And to achieve that, we want to have two colors that are definitely different from each other as far as values go. So one's much darker than, than the other one. Um, so we'll start with the cardic flesh here. I'm just going to be putting this into my airbrush, and this is a P3 paint, so it's not airbrush ready, but that's okay. We just got to thin it down properly by adding probably just a little bit more thinner than we would normally use. So I'm just going to kind of get some of this into my airbrush here real quick. And we're going to thin this down. And we'll thin it down a bit more than normally just to make sure it's a nice thin glaze. Um, it's always better to just slowly build these layers of paint up instead of trying to quickly apply one coat and be done with it. You want to kind of slowly nurture these colors up from the pre-shade. So we have our cardic flesh here in the airbrush. You can see, you can see it's very thin. It's kind of like moving around on my glove a bit when I spray too much of it. It kind of spider webs out. That's, that's what we're looking for. We're wanting a nice thin uh, coat. And we're using uh, the airbrush to kind of dry off these coats um, by using our trigger technique. So we'll kind of be going back and forth on the trigger, kind of like this, as we're applying the paint. And so when we're uh, pulling back, it's letting paint go, but we're, when we're releasing it, it's just letting air out, which is going to dry that layer of paint that we just applied. So we're just going to keep constantly building up these layers of paint, letting them onto the model, and then drying them with the air just over and over again. And what this will do is it'll create a much more, so I can slowly build this color up here without really worrying too much about it having the spider web out or anything. And that's just making sure that the paint is drying properly between applications of the layers. And so with the underspray, we're going to be coming in from an upwards uh, angle here. So I'm going to be targeting areas of the model skin that's uh, darker and going up into these transitional zones. You really don't have to be too careful with this step. It's alright if some of this uh, Underspray gets up a bit higher than you would like it because it'll just be uh, covered up anyway by the overspray when we come in with that color. So we're just slowly building up this color here, layer upon layer, so we're satisfied with this. So you guys can see this skin tone is beginning to show up here, especially in these lower areas in the transitional zones. But if you look at it from above, he's still mostly white paint that you can see from above there. Which is what we want. So you just want to make sure you get into the recesses here, like this little recess in his neck. We want this to be the darker skin tone. Got the uh, the first skin tone down here, and you can st still see that our values from the pre shade are coming through. Still, you can see you'll see these differences between the light and dark areas, and we're maintaining that by just making sure that our paint's nice and thin, our flesh tone paint, so that the uh, white and black paint underneath will still kind of shine through the semi-translucent glaze. Now I'm going to switch out to my brighter skin tone here. And this is again, it's Ren Flesh from P3. And again, you can use any kind of uh, flesh t tones you want with this, you know, whatever matches your own color scheme. Um, the trick is just to make sure you have a darker flesh tone for your underspray and a brighter flesh tone for your overspray. 
down a bit more than normal because it's uh, not airbrush brush ready paint. And also we want to make sure that it's a glaze. Most of the times the when you use paints through the airbrush it will be a glaze, but I just like to um, reinforce that fact and make sure that you thin down the paint maybe just a bit more than you normally would. And uh, to make sure that that thin paint works well for you, you gotta use the trigger technique that I just showed you. You gotta slowly build up the layers or else it'll kind of run away from you. All right, so this time I'm gonna come from above here. If you can see uh, the airbrush, I'm shooting downwards onto the model. When I do this, this will just um, settle on all the raised areas, the shapes. And it'll kind of uh, intermingle with our first uh, color that we applied, the cardi flesh, in those transitional zones. Depending on how different in values and tones your different uh, underspray and overspray skin colors are, uh, you might want to do less or more of this overspray. If it's a really bright skin color, you might want to do a little bit less, just so you don't have too much of a sharp transition there. But so I'm just kind of slowly blowing this color up. Main key is just to make sure we get rid of any kind of grayish tones that are coming through. Make sure it's all flashy so none of our pre-shade is still coming through. Yet the values are still there. Now they're just reinforced by this brighter paint color. So now you guys can see we've got this uh, big suite of uh, different colors here. We've got this bright skin tone going all the way down to these darker skin tones in the recesses. And that gives us nice depth in our skin tones, which looks really good. And so uh, now at this point, uh, we'd like to apply a wash to it. And there's a couple ways to go about doing this, and I'll kind of show you guys both ways we like to do. Um, one way is, uh, well, firstly, the color we're gonna be using is gonna be this Army Painter Flesh Wash, and it's just kind of like a reddish, brownish uh, wash, similar to like Games Workshop's Reichlin Flesh Shade or something like that. Um, and so you can either apply this as a, as a full kind of like mop wash, as you might call it, um, on the whole, skin of the model uh, by, by brush, by hand brush, and if you do that, you just want to make sure that you thin down the, the wash a bit, just so that it won't uh, pull on the raised areas of the skin in odd ways. Um, and this will just reinforce, much like how our overspray reinforced the brighter values, this is going to reinforce the darker values because it's going to kind of darken things up. Um, but another way you can do it is by actually applying this wash through the airbrush, and so I'll kind of show you guys how that works. Um, very similarly to applying any other kind of paint through the airbrush. It's just that we're not going to use any kind of thinner or anything this time. Because uh, the wash is already very thin, we don't really need to thin it down anymore. We're just going to put it straight into our airbrush. So what this will do is this will um, see me spray it on the mat here still creates this color and similarly to uh, with the glaze to get the color to be darker you need to use your trigger to just slowly build up this, uh, this paint so it doesn't spread out on you like that that's not what you want to have it's not just going too hard with the trigger and not just slowly building up the paint burst after burst so usually we'll be doing kind of the similar technique that we did with the underspray we're going to be aiming upwards onto the model and aiming for those recessed areas, and this will just kind of tint the skin in certain areas. It's a very subtle change, and as you, you build up this paint, you can make it uh, stronger and stronger, the effect that it gives you. Because it's a very nice, subtle look on the skin, gives us some tonal variety, and just uh, helps make a bit look a bit more realistic. So 
So sometimes I like doing this instead of doing the wash by brush, just because we can get these really smooth, cool looking transitions and stuff. But for areas like the tops of his arms here, we have, where we have these kind of crevices in the muscles, you can't really get the wash in there but with the airbrush too well. So for areas like that, it would be beneficial to go back with very thin wash by brush and, and hit those areas. After this, we can go in and do some highlights by brush and all that stuff to really bring the skin up. Uh, but this is a, just a quick way to get some nice looking natural skin tones by airbrush relatively quickly. It just took me about 10 minutes or so to do this guy. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, we'll probably come back and do some brush washes and stuff on them, but you all know how to do that, so I won't have that part in the video. Uh, this is just mainly the airbrushing stuff. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, like always, check back with us regularly for our new cheat code videos. We're coming out with them all the time. And uh, like always, put your mainstream out there. Thank you for it.